Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. I'm 40, and my wife is 41. I've traveled a lot for work, and my wife works as an executive secretary. After 17 years of marriage, she surprised me by asking for an open marriage. This caught me off guard because I never expected it. Thankfully, we don't have kids, so I don't have to explain what an open marriage is. My wife has had health issues that prevent her from having children. I've always been loyal to her, believing she felt the same. However, she now feels restricted in our relationship. She says she still cares for me, but she wants something more. I'm feeling a lot of emotions, anger, hurt, and betrayal. I don't like the idea of an open marriage, but I also don't want to lose my wife. So, even though I'm not comfortable with it, I agreed, but we made some rules. First, we agreed not to bring anyone to our home. Second, we'll have access to each other's phones to keep things open and honest. Third, if either of us is with someone else, we have to use protection. We also decided to check each other's profiles. After we set these rules, my wife said she felt relieved, like a weight was lifted off her. But I feel the opposite, like I'm carrying a heavy burden. I don't know what to do or if there's anything I can do. What I am sure of is my deep love for my wife, the mere thought of someone else being able to touch her is mind-boggling. As a result, we decided to sign up for a dating app. Our choice fell on one platform, namely Tinder. We studied each other's dating profiles, identifying those who seemed not only attractive, but those who were looking for additional partners. After a while, we studied each other's cell phones. It turned out that I didn't find a single match in my profile, while my wife's was quite different. She had accumulated over 100 matches, but almost half of them consisted of single men. However, she realized that chatting with single men did not fit within the limits we had set, so she eliminated those matches. This pattern continued for about a week until we met another couple who were also considering opening their marriage. My wife was attracted to this woman's husband. He was of impressive height and was in great physical shape. His wife was also good-looking. She had a prominent bust and was a little overweight, but she was quite attractive despite being a little overweight. It was amazing to learn that people all over the world are in open marriages. A few days later, my wife received a message from the couple. They expressed interest in meeting, and as a result, we agreed to meet at a nearby cafe. The first time we met, there was an attraction between us that immediately made us all feel comfortable. We exchanged contact information and a week later went out for dinner together. We then visited their home for some fun. This is where the story takes an intriguing turn. The guy's wife and I got along well, and we kissed. With smiles on their faces, my wife and her boyfriend went to a private room. A few hours later, we all met up again in the living room, laughing and talking about what had happened. It was a first-time experience for all of us. We agreed to do it again the next weekend, but at our place. Even though I'm still unsure if I'm okay with this, my wife's happiness is very important to me. As the days went by, I noticed my wife wasn't following one of our rules. She started being secretive with her phone, so I decided to talk to her about it. She told me she's been talking to people she met on Tinder. I told her that such communication was not within the agreed-upon limits, and asked her to give me her phone for verification. Although hesitant at first, she eventually handed me her phone. After looking through her messages, I found that she had sent several guys sexually explicit pictures of herself. In addition, she was communicating with all these guys who were apparently single. I was overcome with anger. I couldn't believe she could do such a thing. Breaking the rules we had established, I discussed the situation with her and she replied that she was just having fun. I asked her, how would you react if I sent explicit pictures to other women? She replied that she would be upset. To which I replied that was exactly how I was feeling right now. We came to a consensus that she should erase all messages and delete photos ceasing communication with these people. Although she promised to honor this request, I wasn't sure I could trust her again. Soon the weekend came, the couple we were scheduled to meet cancelled, and my wife and I were left alone. My wife was disappointed but had to deal with it. Nevertheless, I was bothered by the thought that she might not be satisfied with our arrangement and wanted to socialize with other people. After dinner, we returned home to enjoy our time together. Unfortunately, my wife's phone kept ringing and she began to engage in secretive behavior with it again. I asked about the calls, but she brushed them off, saying they meant nothing. Skeptical, I decided to pick up her phone and examine the messages. To my horror, I discovered that she had started sending explicit pictures and messages again. Frustrated, I told her that if she kept breaking our agreement, we would have to rethink the open marriage. Upset, she agreed to stop. But I wasn't sure if I could trust her. The next day, when I came home from work, my wife wasn't home. When she got back, I asked her about her day and asked to see her phone. 
After checking, I didn't find anything suspicious. Another week went by, and I noticed my wife was distancing herself from me. We hadn't seen the couple we were talking to, who were also in an open marriage. After that weekend, I saw her acting secretive with her phone again. This was the third time, and it made me decide to end the open marriage. She told me she didn't agree and didn't want to end our open marriage. She enjoyed being with another man and wanted to keep doing it, saying it added excitement to our relationship. That's when I realized my decision was final. I knew she didn't care about my feelings, so I agreed and accepted that our marriage was over. I was never comfortable with the idea of an open marriage. The next day, while she was at work, I called a moving company to quickly move my things out. My wife usually got home around 6 p.m., so I expected her back by 7 p.m. I packed up and left the house just before 7. I moved into a fully furnished house my dad had given me, and all I needed to buy was a TV. By 8 p.m., everything was set up. Meanwhile, my wife kept calling, worried because I wasn't home. I calmly told her that I didn't agree with the open marriage anymore and that it was best for us to go our separate ways. Despite her pleas and requests to come home, I was determined that our relationship was over. I moved out and had no intention of coming back. A few days passed and she came to me to talk to me. She kept begging me to give her another opportunity. I explained to her that I would not go back to her because of her obvious disregard for my feelings and lack of empathy. After I decided against open marriage, it became obvious that she was primarily interested in her own preferences. That's when she brought up marriage counseling. She explained that she hoped we could save our marriage by settling all the contradictions. I, however, refused. I told her that I didn't think it made sense to go to marriage counseling. I saw no point in spending money on marriage counseling and decided to go to a divorce lawyer. When I informed her of my decision, she left the house in tears, apologizing and begging me to change my mind. In response, I told her that I would think about it. A few weeks later, I spoke to a lawyer and expressed my desire for a divorce. He asked me why, and I told him the whole story. He said that given that we had no children, the process shouldn't be too difficult. I inquired about alimony payments and told him I didn't want the house. I had three other houses that I was willing to offer her. My attorney could not give a definite answer about alimony. He said it was up to the judge to make the final decision. Since my wife works and earns a good income, he said the alimony amount might not be much. He asked if I was sure about the house, and I told him I was. I own three other homes, all fully paid off and given to me by my dad almost 17 years ago, even before I married my wife. A few weeks later, my wife was officially served with divorce papers. She accused me of being unreasonable, but I reminded her that she was the one who suggested an open marriage. The divorce went through quickly. I decided to give her the house. To my surprise, the judge ruled that I had to pay $500 a month in alimony for six years. She tried to get more, but the judge said the difference in our incomes wasn't enough to justify it, especially since she earned a lot. After the hearing, I gained my freedom. Despite my ex-wife's attempt to apologize, I paid no attention to her gesture. About four weeks after the hearing, I received a phone call from the wife of another couple practicing open marriage. She informed me that my ex-wife was dating her husband. I replied, we finalized our divorce about a month ago and she was surprised. Then she said something unexpected to me. She offered to come over to my place to have some fun together. I understood the implication, but politely declined, explaining that I wasn't ready to rush things. Three weeks later, that guy's wife contacted me again and asked if she could come visit. I agreed, and when she arrived at my place, it was obvious that she was upset. I asked what was wrong, and she admitted that her husband and my ex-wife were becoming increasingly close, and she didn't know what to do. I asked who initiated the idea of open marriage, her or her husband. She replied that they were both in agreement with it from the beginning. I noticed that her husband seemed to be more inclined to the idea of open marriage. Check read again. And I comforted her. I reassured her by saying, it'll work out. We talked for a while longer, after which she left. Although I could have easily had an affair with her, I decided not to. Eventually, she and her husband got back together. I later found out that he ended things with my ex-wife and chose to stay with his wife. I didn't plan to share my experience, but I felt like I needed to. I didn't know before how common open marriages and relationships were. It's confusing to me why these kinds of relationships are so popular. Second story, I never thought I'd be writing this. My wife, Emily, and I have been together for 10 years, married for 7. We built a life together, a home, many memories, and what I thought was a strong relationship. It wasn't perfect, but I always believed we could get through anything. I trusted her completely. Then there's my dad. He's been my support all my life. 
I've always looked up to him and turned to him when things got tough. I never had a reason to doubt him either. Family is supposed to be the people you can always trust, right? That's what I believed. Over the past year, though, things started to feel off. At first, I didn't think much of it. Emily and my dad were close, and I thought that was good. I was happy they got along. But over time, I started feeling distant from Emily. She was quieter, distracted, like her mind was elsewhere. I thought we were just going through a rough patch, every couple does, or so I told myself. But the distance didn't go away. Our conversations became less meaningful, and the connection we used to have seemed to disappear. I felt more alone even when she was with me. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Meanwhile, my dad and Emily still acted the same at family gatherings, talking and laughing like everything was fine. I convinced myself I was overthinking it. After all, why would I doubt the two people I trusted most? One evening, after working late, I came home earlier than usual. The house was strangely quiet. That's when I found them, my wife and my dad, together in our bed. I didn't need an explanation. Everything suddenly made sense. The distance, the secrets, the betrayal. My world fell apart in that moment, and I've been trying to figure out how to move forward ever since.